Okay, so the recording is going. Okay, welcome everyone. Um, and welcome to the meeting of the Amherst Council on Aging. Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, GLC 308 section 18, this meeting of the Council on Aging is being conducted via remote participation. Um, so I'm gonna do a roll call check here of members. Um, and uh, so uh, Rosemary Kopp, and this will be as a chance, by the way, if you're currently muted to uh, unmute yourself uh, and say your name. Um, so uh, Rosemary Koffler. Present. Sue Dirks. Present. Yvette Pallison. Here. Uh, Jacqueline Smith Crooks. Here. Greg Bascom. Timothy Neal. Here, present. All right. All right. Now I need to ask some guests. I'm very excited to introduce a couple of guests, um, including Chad Fuller. Uh, Chad, are you there? Hi. Okay, that looks like a yes. <laughs> um, and, um, and Mila Montemayor. Here. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sue, uh, did uh, Chad? I, I saw him visually. He waved his hand as indicating his as present uh, that he's present. So just to note that. Um, okay. So that's that's terrific. Um, and thanks to everyone. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, I just would also want to remind you uh, that if you're um, that if you're dialing in by phone. Uh, you press star nine to raise your hand to speak. Um, and um, if you're using uh, there, if you're using a computer or tablet, you can click on the raise hand button. Usually we're pretty informal and small. So we just use the old fashioned method of raising our hand. Uh, and uh, um, that that's well, um, that works quite well. Um, and I'll be watching the screen for all of your shining faces. Uh, finally, as a housekeeping rule, um, I encourage everyone to, to mute when you're not speaking uh, and, and because it cuts down on background noise, uh, that really helps us um, stay focused on our agenda. And you can always unmute um, uh, when, when, you, you know, when, when you need to speak. Um, Let's see. Um, all right, uh, I think that's it for now. And um, I wanted to make sure everybody received uh, the documents. Um, um, oh, I wanted to also ask just, uh, um, I wanted to ask Chad, um, have, did, have you been able to sign to, to get sworn in, Chad? Um. No, um, I've already done the uh, conflict of interest for another board uh, okay. a while All back. Right. Uh, okay. But not for this position. Okay, so now seems to be a good, ch good uh, chance to announce that uh, we have uh, not yet official, uh, but um, we have, uh, we're going to soon be able at our January, January meeting to uh, welcome with open arms uh, two, indivi two individuals uh, um, to officially join us as council members. So that'll, we'll, we'll bring, we'll, we're bringing our council up to the, it's full compl complement of nine members. That's the same number of members they have, uh, by the way, on the Supreme Court. So what do you know? <laughs> All right, okay. So, um, Mary Beth has, uh, first of all, I, I guess I also want to ask if there's anyone on the call uh, who need a uh, member of the public who's here. I don't think we have that, but if you are, um, you're welcome to express your viewpoints. Anyone? Okay, I think not. 
uh, public comment just for for those who are here for the first time public comment is uh, is welcome and this meeting is open to the public and is being recorded as well so what we share here um, is accessible um, uh, to the public um, uh, Mary Beth has, uh, you may have heard that Mary Beth has some conflicting uh, meeting commitments uh, this morning. So we're gonna have, sh we're gonna invite her to do her presentation and her update uh, later on in this meeting. Um, so now seems to be a good time for um, me to do, um, um, uh, to just speak to and uh, to uh, the highlights of the chair's report of the preceding month. And I, I wanna say that um, um, I, I have not yet shared that, the, that report, um, although there are sections of it that uh, you have received um, um, because we've been, the good news is that uh, we've been so busy this, this month, we can't keep up with ourselves. Uh, you will receive that report uh, sometime uh, within the next week or so. Uh, but one thing that uh, I can mention uh, that you did receive that is a component of that report um, that is uh, Yvette uh, and my um, summary of attending the um, council, the Massachusetts Council um, on Aging. And um, so you have that report in your hands. Um, and Yvette, did you wanna say, would you be willing to say just a few words about your experience of that? Uh, sure. Um, I was really grateful as I said, to be able to attend, thank you. And uh, I, I attended um, workshops or presentations that were of interest to me. Um, I enjoyed um, the uh, programs uh, uh, related to low income individuals, seniors, uh, alternative, uh, alternatives to traditional uh, burials and um, and uh, I was, as I said, just struck with how uh, councils on aging across the state were absolutely interested in um, working together and sharing the information that they already worked out. And, uh, and I was just so um, honored to be part of, you know, uh, that community. Uh, who cares so much. Uh, and like I noted, I did feel a little slight disconnect uh, because a lot of those programs were in the Northeast. Um, you know, um, there was reference to, uh, you know, Greenfield, Franklin County, uh, and they said that we were, you know, the entire state was well represented. Um, mm -hmm. Transportation was of interest to me, and that I believe included even walking. So, you know, it was really fascinating uh, to me. So thank you very much, Pat and everybody else. Mm -hmm. Yes, and a special thank you to the friends for Absolutely. supporting our participation financially. Um, I would add, and you'll see my comments um, on the workshops that I attended. Um, and I think one of the things that, um, um, that it did for me is really stimulate some specific policy questions that I had about uh, services to seniors, uh, uh, which, which I posed in the meetings. And um, also just to say, uh, to, to observe that what was missing from the conference, um, <laughs> I've been to probably a, a more than 100 conferences in my lifetime. And um, I know that, um, you know, this was a conference by and large of professionals. And I think what I would have welcomed is more um, uh, leadership uh, with respect to uh, uh, council members themselves, uh, at least uh, uh, sort of in the vein of self-advocacy and uh, 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 seniors themselves articulating what our needs are. Um, and so I, I included that in my report and I, I do, um, it, um, I think it's a value that, um, um, that um, 
is 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 really is uh, consistent with our mission of advocacy. Um, and um, I also I I also wanted to mention that um, there wasn't a lot of identifying gaps in services to seniors, and I would have welcomed that uh, because you, we can't change what we don't face. And, uh, and welcome to Greg, it's good to see you. Uh, he's just joined us. Hi, Greg. Um, Hello. Oh, good, We're, you're on and with us, that's wonderful. Um, Greg, I'm talking about observations, uh, sharing some observations on the Massachusetts Council on a Aging Conference that I attended. Um, so uh, what, I, what I was also missing was, um, I, I'm missing strategies of certainly, <laughs> I mentioned uh, uh, for senior em empowerment, uh, but also um, I didn't hear, I, I, real, I heard very little uh, about strategies of outreach to people of color and underserved non-English language communities. And um, I think that that, is, that was a huge gap. And um, as a newbie to that group, um, I, I have to say that um, I, uh, feel called to uh, urge urge some uh, vitality in that area, some some speaking up and speaking out, uh, because I know, and you know, that Massachusetts is a very diverse state along ethnic and racial lines, and we miss the contributions um, and energy and critique important critiques of. Um, uh, various communities. Um, so um, I missed, uh, and I just want to say one thing, and I, you know, overall, I mean, I learned a lot, but I think uh, we have, there's some growth areas that are necessary. Um, you know, I, I hear that uh, from seniors a lot, and I think the research supports this, that uh, seniors are also looking for gen intergenerational activities and why this may be, be very limited uh, right now, in this period of time, I think we as a council um, can can still uh, plan for the future and look ahead and uh, honor that. And uh, finally, what I didn't see, and I'm becoming personally uh, interested in this, is more support for caregivers. Uh, we know that there are a lot of seniors who are caregivers. Uh, and and uh, I am soon to become one <laughs> in my own family because my husband is facing some serious surgery in the next, in the, in very soon, um, and two, two serious surgeries. Um, and um, I'm, I'm very called and moved upon the uh, personal commitment um, uh, of some of you who have been providing caregiving. And, um, and wow, uh, on the front lines of that, that's gonna, that I think that that, uh, I know that we do have some support for caregivers, certainly in the council, but I think it, it might be, um, we might be able to consider how we might enrich programming in that area. Uh, because uh, I know that people sitting here are ex some, you know, have direct experience and I'm powerful stories, I'm sure, about the things that have worked and, and not worked so well uh, with respect to care, caregiving. So um, any, any comments or questions around that, um, that report? Um, so yeah, feel free to call or, or um, if you have questions. Uh, and uh, this, this, I believe there's a spring conference, Rosemary, uh, I think, uh, is, is that correct? That usually there's up one in the fall and the spring? We can't hear you. Not okay. to my knowledge, there's only a fall conference. All right, okay. Yes. So it's a yearly conference then I believe. And so my hope is that next year, uh, <laughs> not only will, will we send a delegation of people uh, uh, to that conference, whether it's by Zoom or, Zoom or in person, but that we also, we may have the capacity to share some of our own experience about what we've done as a council or uh, around certain issues that, um, that we, we would like to um, share with uh, other uh, councils um, in the Commonwealth. So, um, okay. Um, 
I would like to then move on to uh, our the next item, which is um, uh, uh, bylaws Article Eight, Standing Committees, and this is this is a discussion. Um, um, and I want to say thank you. Uh, hold on, let me just pull this up on my own screen. Uh, hold on here. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I, I want to say um, that um, at our preceding meeting, uh, we talked a little bit about our committee structure and the, what, uh, the bylaws. And again, uh, for newcomers, just by way of background uh, to this meeting, um, the um, our, our original bylaws call for, for five committees and three members on each committee. And um, um, th that a process for a, a group of nine people uh, seemed rather burdensome and too many committees. And so um, uh, we also, um, so, so I've been in deep conversation um, with um, um, Rosemary uh, who uh, was formerly uh, chaired uh, and on her shoulders I sit and, <laughs> and I uh, have learned so much and so, We've been looking at the committee structure to try to um, streamline it, I think, uh, um, as one possibility uh, and make it, um, and I've also had been, had some deep conversations as well with, um, with Mary Beth. And so it's, it's what the proposal that you see here is definitely a working document um, and it, um, um, and should be considered absolutely a draft. It, it needs your work and in, input. And um, so um, if you have that document in front of you, um, um, you will see that what we're proposing is um, eliminating the, uh, replacing the five committee structure with uh, three committees. Um, we would, uh, um, and those committees would be, um, and we're, we're still playing with the language here, but one, one committee would be so, social determinants of uh, senior well-being. So, um, and I've tried to define those a bit. Um, um, Rosemary um, um, has suggested, and I'm totally with her on this, that we give some practical exam examples of, of specific kinds of commi uh, committees. But we know, as Mary Beth has pointed out frequently, that um, there's social and physical um, and um, health um, and um, um, uh, are indicators or metrics of uh, determining whether uh, um, se senior members of the community are well served. And so we wanted to be able to, to um, um, have that as one focus, a, a significant focus of our committee. Um, program resources look, looks at our existing, hi Mary Beth, you just joined us. Uh, program resources looks looks at uh, uh, existing program and programs and also um, helps um, identify where there are gaps in our programming and helps us to figure out how we might enrich enrich programming in the future. Um, and then finally, uh, I, I'm proposing um, that we have a committee. <laughs> Uh, it's called it's aspiring to beloved community, um, and that that looks at um, that would be 
a brand new committee, which looks at um, how, how to enrich and support our community's um, elder subcultures. And there are multiple subcultures. <laughs> um, and, um, it's, uh, but, um, um, and I've identified some of them, some of them there um, and um, provides an opportunity for us to work and collaborate better in everything we do um, to honor the diversity in our community, um, to embrace it and also to build our own skills and cultural competence of interacting um, um, and to monitor that, um, you know, to be mindful of it so that we as a council are, would be showing leadership in um, um, uh, our attention to a uh, delivering in our programs and our service and our advocacy, the kind of warm welcome that uh, we aspire to. So um, that's, so, so that's sort of, that's the kind of, that's, uh, I'm just kind of taking you through sort of the overview of, of what's on uh, the proposal. Um, I, as we think about committee structures as well, um, uh, and Mary Beth and I've discussed this a bit, we're also looking at thinking of the committee structures as something that associate members of the council could participate in as well. Um, and and uh, particularly around specific uh, task forces or working groups. Um, and, that the, and the idea behind that is that um, that leadership comes in a variety of ways and uh, from and um, not everyone uh, has the same interest in policy that all of you have, uh, but would really be excited about working on a specific project. So, um, and we don't want to lose that talent. And every day, uh, you and I and Mary Beth and uh, we, we see talent in our community among seniors. Um, and rich talent, and we want to be able to harness that talent uh, around projects that fit uh, folks' interest and um, their passion. Um, so uh, I'm proposing, in order to stay connected with, um, you know, the committees, uh, that every council member participate in some way in one of those committees in addition to your service uh, on this council. Um, and, um, and then finally, you'll see we've eliminated, I suggest I'm proposing that we uh, eliminate the Hives Committee, but certainly we're not eliminating it as a committee. We're not in, in any way eliminating interest in Hives. Um, and that's the Highland Valley Elder Services, our funding, uh, we, from whom we receive substantial funding, um, but rather that uh, reports on hives either come in writing or orally, um, but we don't need a specific committee about that. It's usually, usually uh, our content encounters with hives uh, require, uh, may, may have required in the past reports. And so uh, we don't want to take up our precious time in think, you know, uh, listening to those reports, uh, uh, unless and until there are things in those reports that are relevant, to, uh, that require some decision on our, uh, from us, uh, or uh, about which we have some feedback. So, um, with that said, I would I just would like to open things up um, to um, any of you who have some feedback on this. Sue. Uh, about Highland Valley, um, my understanding is it's a two way street. When somebody goes to their meetings, as Norma so faithfully has. Um, Highland Valley is also seeking feedback from 
all the councils around their area and they've been disappointed but uh, that not many have but pleased that Amherst has has been faithful and in a sense they rely on our comments as much as we rely on theirs so mm -hmm. just to receive a report from them cuts off our communication with them mm -hmm. that's a great point and i think i um yeah i think that's a great point and i appreciate that and uh i guess speaking for me that that would be uh, we i think we would want to capture that perhaps in the way we shape that committee uh by um uh, creating that two-way expectation. Uh, I would consider that that would be um, that um, that we would want to integrate that into the into the um, um, expectation of of those reports that uh, the, I, I, uh, or the the point person uh, who um, which currently is me, uh, would invite uh, uh, regularly uh, when, when they're asking for our fee feedback, it would be our representative's duty and responsibility to uh, seek that, uh, that uh, feedback from all of you. So I appreciate your, your, um, your experience on that, Sue, and I think that's a great a great observation. Um, anybody else want to comment on that, Tim? Uh, first, I, I would agree with that. I, I do think even symbolically having that as a more formal recognition in terms of a committee, you could even have a one person committee if you want. Uh, but mm -hmm. so that would be first initial comment. The um, the comments I did want to make on the committee structure, I, I think that's a good idea. I have, uh, I'm one who likes more brevity in terms of the titles of these committees, if you <laughs> Yeah. I just, in reading over, I had no clue what any of the committees were based on the proposed names. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, how, how, you, how you do that is a tough one. For example, uh, the social determinants of social of senior well-being, I don't know what that is. And mm -hmm. if you read through it, you maybe can figure it out. Uh, the program resources, that's a little closer. Aspiring to beloved community, the same thing. So just as a, as a thought, as I was jotting these down, I would say in the first one, maybe just services and the second one, programs and the third one, inclusion. I mean, those are three just names as a proposal now, people might have different ideas, but that's one thought um, that just to, to throw that one out there. Okay, I like it. We're struggling with that. Uh, we've been struggling with that. So, uh, and I hear uh, Rosemary. Yes, I'm, I'm totally with you on that, um, Tim. I have felt the same way. I like the, the more simplicity of knowing exactly what the goal is of the committee. And um, I find that some of these um, statements are quite vague and um, it isn't clear what one's role would be in serving on this commit on these committees. Mm -hmm. So I think I like something a little more clear and simply stated. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Um, so, okay, that's good. Anybody else? I may be old school. I may be, <laughs> you, you, you may be way ahead of me in terms of, of thinking this way. Maybe, maybe this is old fashioned, but go ahead. I'd like to hear what other people have to say. Sure. Okay. Can I say something? Sure. Okay. So I'm hearing about that. I thought it was, there was a lot within each uh, group um cumbersome almost but then i got excited because you know i imagined that these groups would have a charge you know like an active agenda a committee that's addressing all these things together maybe more than three people you know i don't know it just a working group 
uh, would generate ideas rather than, I mean, feeling like we just meet once a month, but that we actually participate in our brainstorming. So those groups, they're very large, but what if committees worked on those, that rubric, you know? Um, and as an aside, I wanted to comment um, that, that I was struck, I guess, at the conference and with this document that you've generated, and it's considerable and positive, that um, we're not uh, we're not uh, including uh, what seniors um, think. You know, we're the ones not not me, but in general, we're the ones who come up with what's great for others, and I think it's so important like in that first part, the social determinants. I think it's important to acknowledge um, and that we're interested in what people think. And also those cultural groups, when you mentioned L, um, what is it, the? Um, well, there's, uh, actually, I, I can- TQ. Yeah. GLBTQ. So if you mention that, you know, um, then uh, it, you did it in the, well, and also um, the, the people with diseases and what they have learned and how they can share that. I, I just wondered whether it was important to, for me, to see cultural groups in that mm -hmm. rubric. And ask, mm -hmm. you know, you know, ask people what what would what do they need to participate? And mm -hmm. if it's not in A, then it's in B or C. I just mm -hmm. feel that if we're committed to that beloved community, uh, we have to um, go to people and ask they, for their input, not just like I was struck with the Healthy Initiatives program at the conference that. Uh, I, I really love the uh, interprofessional idea, work, um, working with other people, other agencies and professionals, and also the academic community. That was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, but it's always like what we're thinking people need, not asking them. Exactly. What does it take and what do you want? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. Uh, I see Rosemary has comment. Some of those questions that you raise um, are very good of that. Um, I think a lot of that information would only be attainable by conducting some sort of a survey. Yes. Um, of what people in the community are looking for. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you don't always get <laughs> a I broad know. spectrum from a survey. Another thing I picked up in that conference, I believe the healthy initiatives was that academic component that seniors, it seemed to me that they really love young people like students. And mm -hmm. so Mary Beth, for example, has a whole cohort of students that do Meals on Wheels, I believe. And uh, that's exactly the type of people, they're sort of like our grandchildren that they would be maybe the ones that go canvassing and find out more about seniors, you know, sort of like a census, what, you know, so it's personalized and with somebody lovely, a student, you know? Mm -hmm. I see Tim's, did I see Tim's hand? I, excuse me, you did. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, I, my own personal feeling is uh, that charge, if you will, to seek input from the general community uh, could, I think, uh, be part of the uh, each of the three committees without necessarily having it the focus of one particular committee. I mean, everybody on every committee, I think, should be seeking outside input rather than us just trying to sort of the inside out as opposed to the outside in kind of philosophy. Um, Getting back to the just the general structure, I think three committees makes more sense than five, like because we're only a small nine person board. And then trying mm -hmm. to 
assess which are the three committees or what are the three major areas that we need to focus on, uh, mm -hmm. then you can get to what's the title of each one. But to me, that that makes more, uh, some sense, and maybe we could have a little discussion about that. Is there like is there an area? that's not covered by any of these committees that we've forgotten about, or are these mm -hmm. three committees the ones that are broad enough that could encompass uh, the efforts of, of our board members as we move ahead? So that's one comment right there. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Um, I, and I, um, I guess I, I also welcome uh, the, the streamlining of the titles. That sounds good mm -hmm. to me. Um, as a point of clarification, I guess I would say that um, what, um, and I don't want to speak for Mary Beth, so I'm look, I'll be <laughs> looking to hear her comments on this, but I think part of what um, we uh, we're trying, what we're, what we um, are imagining is that it's just for the, in the, these committees are not populated just by members of the council, but that, they, that, that this is kind of a recruiting tool for other people who are passionate about it, uh, you know, a particular issue. Um, let's say it's senior transportation. Um, that, 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 so that's an issue. Uh, I would describe that as kind of a, a a, poly, a, poly, a um, you know, specific work project um, that um, needs attention and some dedicated thinking about. So, and I'm, I'm not imagining, I mean, there are under the topic of services, uh, let's just use that uh, for, as an example, there are, you know, there are, uh, we have so many um, and I think seniors have ex expressed informally um, so many um, uh, identified so many needs for, um, let's say, disease prevention or a need for some groups. Um, uh, let's say, uh, let's just say, intergenerational contact and how that would be designed and. So that there's there's there are many subcategories more than a single committee could work on, but if we had uh, from the sort of overarching committee, each overarching committee structure, we could have separate work groups that would invite uh, people to pull you know pull together. Uh, I don't know if that's manageable. Whether it just we just need to have three committees only uh, that have multiple assignments. Uh, but we, we're a, we are ourselves a small group and we need to, we need to recruit others into our thinking and planning and advocacy. Um, so I, the other thing I want to just, this is, I'm not speaking as chair here, but as just a fellow member, um, is that, um, if I, um, I guess part of what I'm hoping for along the lines of our uh, being faithful to our mission is that we're not seen only as a service, uh, an organization that pro provides services to seniors, but also an advocacy organization uh, with and on behalf of seniors. I don't wanna lose the advocacy component of that um, because I think that helps ca us carry into the future um, new ideas and new ways of, of um, it, you know, uh, new forms of problem solving. So um, that's, that's, that's my only re refinement, I suppose, to would be service, services and advocacy could, could be the title of the, uh, we could replace that, that uh, overly wordy social determinants of senior well-being. So um, I don't know. Um, I, I want to, I would like to personally would like to preserve the, at, that advocacy um, function. Um, Hello. Hello. Yes. Who's speaking? Can you hear me? Yes, yes Jacqueline. Exactly. Yeah. 
Wonderful. Yeah, okay. I've, been, I've, been, I've been pressing all these buttons. One of the things that uh, I think I need to add is uh, coming to a session to learn how to use this Zoom. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about uh, the proposed changes, the streamlining, and being able to incorporate um, all, all, all areas of the community and looking at the individual needs as well as, as the collective needs here in the community. Mm -hmm. I think that um, I, I think that the three group concept is a very good one, and as has been said, I, I think it's a matter of just delving more deeply into what we would want to come out of, or mm -hmm. what we would want to have happen in each group, and mm -hmm. that that. I think that we can't really concretize that so well until we get some more uh, input from the, quote, outside, those who are not functioning formally on the committee. And as we do that, um, as has been said in, in a number of other ways, then we can be more effective at doing what it is accomplishing what we intend to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, let me, oh, go ahead, Mila. Yeah. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, regardless of the name of the committee or how many we will end up with, I just want to follow up that a year or two ago, I had a proposal to do a survey of the community to determine more specifically the needs and of our seniors. And because of a survey that was done by the city, we decided not to because it was an extra expense that we didn't need to. We already had the information that may have changed now. That was uh, yes. over a year ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also want to uh, express my my continuing interest in being part or more active with the part of the community that are not members or are not taking advantage of what the seniors can offer, namely mm -hmm. uh, the international group. Amherst is such an international community that for example, it's not unusual for, to even offer uh, non-English speakers a small group for seniors. They can learn. They don't have to be fluent in it, but good enough for them to feel included or mm -hmm. feel part of the seniors. Mm -hmm. and, and not only are we giving, let's ask them to give us something about what they can contribute about their culture and to the to the community, and I don't know what part of the eventually what what is the name of that committee, but I just want to express that mm -hmm. part of it that I'm interested in. I appreciate that. Go uh, go ahead, uh, uh, Jacqueline. I think I heard your voice. Yes, I I I hear it. I'm not sure your name, and I I agree with you. I see that aspiration, the aspiring to the beloved community can be can embrace so much and so many. And I, once we start to talk about it more, we can begin to see some of the places where the sitting takes place. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you. I agree with you. And I do think another survey because people were at different places socially. We were at different places uh, nationally when it comes to the, nation, the, the health on a national level. And people are going to be saying things, I suspect, that they might not have said 
and and depending on who who conducts the survey, if it is done in person, um, I, I think a lot more time has been spent over the past nine months where people will have more to say, mm-hmm. and they can say that they're having their say. Mm-hmm. Uh, just wanted to say that was Mila, and you are. I don't see your name on the board. I'm Jacqueline. I'm Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Uh, yes. Hopefully I, uh, by I, then thank you. I'll have better command of this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> thank, thank you. <laughs> thank so, you, Mila. So this is um, an amazing conversation. I I would like to add one more thing to this with respect to uh, inclusion. Um, and, and this is, I'm going to, this is going to be a kind of a, a risky and hard statement, but I'm going to say it anyway, folks, um, that so oftentimes it's been what, this is an observation, um, um, that sometimes people, uh, I, I've noticed that, um, that I go to a lot of meetings and and there are very few people of color in the room or people of, uh, you know, uh, other ethnicities besides majority white committees. Um, And that is something that has evolved over a very long period of time and that there's a lot of pain involved uh, around that, uh, that has been experienced over the decades by, um, I believe, by, uh, many uh, members of disenfranchised populations. And so one, one thing that is, um, I think is, I've been thinking about a lot with respect to our little council is that um, very much like our Congress, uh, the functional part of our Congress, which our United States Congress, which is there, which is uh, there's, not a lot that has been functioning very well, but um, that there are caucuses that sometimes people can come together um, as caucuses um, among uh, their uh, uh, um, people that they've identified with that, that uh, uh, um, so that there's a black caucus, there's a women's caucus, there's a disability caucus, and that, that sometimes the conversation and the healing and the possibility for frank discussion mm-hmm. about what our needs are can be mm-hmm. strengthened and built there. And then um, that we as public officials, as we have a duty um, as a council to serve all members of the Amherst community but that we're hearing those voices from a a position of strength. And let me just say that, I mean, it it does get very complicated, doesn't it? Because the transportation issues that people of color, just people of color may have, might be different. Their experiences may be different. Their treatment, let's say in hospitals might be different. And we, I think we know that that, you know, we're no, no different from nationally that there have been experiences that have made that, uh, uh, that have disenfranchised people. So, uh, and, and that's happened in this community as well. So I guess I wanna say that um, in a, sorry, sorry if this, and this conversation is a messy one because, you know, there's, all, you know, people have all different cross identities. You might, you may feel strongly about women's issues and uh, issues of uh, uh, of uh, the, of um, uh, Latinos. You know, and and so both issues are important. So, which committee would you choose on, or which, you know, how would you connect with that? But we can sort of, I think that we can figure that out as we move forward. Mm-hmm. But I, I want to say that I don't think. It's, uh, I think that uh, this hard thinking um, about um, how to open things up in a way that, that people feel they can bring 
the strength of their experience, the honesty of their experience um, into the conversation and into um, advocacy. Um, 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 I would love to hear, and I, and I, and I love Mila's point and, and um, Yvette's point about hearing the vo from directly from the voices of those, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and added to that, um, another thing I've learned from Mary Beth is that we, we cannot assume that um, the council will serve or tends to serve everyone in our clubhouse that is the bank center. <laughs> um, yeah. That, yeah. there, that we may be able to develop over time strategies of engagement that are and support for seniors in venues where those seniors feel more comfortable. And let me, let me just uh, suggest, for example, Chinese Americans, um, uh, seniors my, uh, have, a, I think, but I don't know, have a robust community, sub-community, subculture in Amherst. And so, um, and I know that, you know, we're, we're all trying to kind of like reach out, aren't we? <laughs> in some ways and figure out, so how, how can, in a respectful and culturally competent way, can we, uh, you know, think about, um, to offer some invitations uh, and also to say, well, we have these resources. Does that, would that be helpful for you? Or would it be, would, would you be, we, you know, we notice in our nutrition program and or our meal program that um, we're offering dishes that may be of no interest to people in your community. That's a bold question, right? <laughs> um, but, but you know, we we want to hear that voice in any case. Like, what? Tell tell us. Um, you know, we want to listen. We want to sort of think about that. And you know, what should we be advocating for as a community? Um, you know, so that's it's not just around ethnicity though, but it's also. Uh, there are people who have kidney disease who cannot eat the sal salty diet that's offered by uh, the, you know, uh, or people, Muslims who, who uh, have dietary restrictions or whatever, We're, you know, let, let's try to create a culture that allows those differences to be respected and um, affirmed. And Tim. There, I just unmuted myself. Uh, those are all good thoughts. Um, I'd like to just bring us back to originally the committee structure rather than mm -hmm. the discussion that we've been having on what, what might be included. Uh, I think what you're talking about would be a perfect uh, charge, if you will, to the folks or the committee that is in your list here is number C, to, which is great. Uh, I, I, you'll probably learn as we move ahead as, as a board. I like to just focus on exactly what we're talking about during the time and make some discussions and uh, spend a little bit more time on that kind of structure. So let me move back to a, do we think a smaller number of committees is reasonable, three versus five? We have to mm -hmm. talk about our own involvement. Sure. I. 100% support having the associate members, uh, but we also, if we are gonna be involved in a committee structure, we need to come up to some decisions whether we have a smaller rather than a larger number of committees. So that's point one. And then number point two is what are the, if it's three versus five, what are the components of the various three? Uh, and then we can then sort of talk about what the titles are. As I indicated from the beginning, I'm one who likes to have a short brevity and in a title so one can 
both ourselves and externally, everyone knows right right from the get-go, well, that's what that committee is talking about. Yes. Uh, so I'd like to, maybe we could focus there. And if today's purpose is to discuss that, I would spend, actually, frankly, want to spend less time philosophizing about what actually each committee does and more specifically talking about numbers of committees, what's the general charge of each committee. And then once we get that, then we can move ahead where the committees themselves could then talk a little bit more about what is their particular structure and focus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that all sounds good. Um, and and a actually, I mean, um, I, I think that that echoes what um, I've heard from Roseberry uh, uh, and, uh, and I appreciate that. So I guess I guess the question I have for you is, I I want my hope is that we do this collectively, so that uh, and which is exactly what we've done today. So I need I need help. I need help from each of you to um, uh, around this. Uh, I guess like one question I have is like we could we could. Uh, uh, I could hear a motion uh, if that, that's one way to do it uh, about the, um, um, I, see Ch I see Chad's hand. Uh, let me just finish Chad and, and then uh, 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 an emotion, uh, uh, a motion uh, uh, about that. Um, and I started, I think I heard something like that beginning to be formed uh, from Tim. Um, and then um, probably uh, with respect to what each of these, what the committee on service and advocacy, what, what would be its charge, what the program resources committee uh, would be its charge. And, and finally the inclusion committee, what would be its charge. And I'm wondering if each member of, the, of this group uh, would be up for working on, you know, picking one of them and helping us delineate what kind of things, you know, what kinds of activities should, what kind of charge should be developed. Does that make sense? And then Chad, I, uh, okay, uh, I, I saw Chad's hand first and then Tim. Yeah, I wasn't really sure if I should even enter uh, because I am not appointed yet. Um, and maybe with these comments, um, you can vote me out before I get appointed in January. <laughs> but um, I have right right now, I have on my organization development hat. That was my uh, training for training and, you know, work experience for 20 years. And I hear you guys struggling with um, some issues that remind me of that hat, which is a systemic hat. It's uh, view, viewing things systemically. Uh, you guys have a new uh, executive director. You guys have a new president. Um, you guys are, you know, going in a new direction. And the discussion you're having is very important. It's not out in the weeds, it's, it needs to be done. Um, but my thought is you're putting the cart before the horse with, shall we go from three, from five committees to three committees, et cetera. My belief in terms of organization development is with the history I just mentioned that you would go to a strategic planning process, that you would do just what you've been doing, get down there in the weeds and discuss what's important and develop a strategic plan for the next three to five years. They change every three to five years or, or whatever time, time you pick. So, you know, I hear uh, after 40 years of the same director um, that things went in a certain direction and that the folks may be looking for a new direction. I see the aged in three populations. Uh, you know, uh, the antiques like my dad, 90 years old, then there's a section in the middle. And, you know, there's the young old, the people who have just recently retired. Mm -hmm. So, you know, each one of those populations has different 
strengths and weaknesses and so on. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, um, I, I'm sort of throwing a uh, wrench in uh, your process and saying, you may want to do the strategic plan first. That will generate all this other stuff that you're talking about. It sounds like you want to open it up much more than the board was before. Mm -hmm. You want to have an executive committee that uh, does policy and then you want to open the door because it is a volunteer organization to lots of participation by the community, mm -hmm. uh, BIPOC, uh, BIPOC outreach, uh, LGBT outreach, uh, you know, folks who are a little less of income and so on. So I hope that doesn't uh, uh, skew things too much. But as I look at it, that's that's what I see. Really helpful. Th thank you so much for that, Chad. That's a really helpful comment. Tim, do you want to? Um, I saw your hand. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I think those are, are good comments, uh, which caused me to think of maybe a fourth. <laughs> and, that, and that was one that was broader, like uh, mission planning, a planning committee or a something like that, that would address all these things rather than each committee meeting, all of us have to discuss that. I mean, that's the whole purpose of subcommittees. So yeah, yeah. that might be another one that is totally different than each of these three. It's a broader sort of, where are we now? Where we go to the future? Sort of a long range, as I said, more sort of a long range planning committee, which could address those things and bring things back. Reassessment of the bylaws, reassessment of all that stuff having a subcommittee that does all that um, <clears throat> as, a, as a thought, uh, as I sort of changed from my initial comment about three <laughs> rather than five, but that's, that's one idea. But having said that, uh, the question I, I actually had was in terms of the structure and the process, you mentioned making a motion. I frankly, I haven't been close enough to understand what our current bylaws say about bylaws changes. If there are five committees, how do we actually change that? Um, do we as a board vote and a majority then <laughs> changes the bylaws or is there any other structure to that? Because that would be one question. Perhaps you, you folks who have gotten the past, Rosemary, I see your hand, yeah. yeah. I did look into that and uh, according to the Elder uh, or Department of Elder Affairs, there is no problem with changing our bylaws to our needs or changing our mission to our needs. It's totally up to our group as to what we want. And uh, there's no restriction there. Yeah, and I guess, it, uh, um, and thanks for that, Rosemary. Um, um, so I've got two things in my mind right now. Um, one is um, one is like a, a frustration I'm sure you all feel around COVID because I'm so hungry for us to, you know, to really wrestle with all this stuff face to face, and that's not going to happen uh, because I think strategic. I noticed, by the way, that there is going to that I don't know how, how they're going to do it. Mary Beth maybe knows that there's going to be a retreat for the. Uh, for the town, uh, I don't know whether it's town government uh, or something that the town managers have, it, there's going to be a retreat of some kind. And I'm thinking, what, how is that going to work? <laughs> so Zoom retreat, I don't know. Um, you know, because I think, so there's that, I love Chad's idea about strategic planning and I do sense that. And um, I'm also, you know, looking at, um, and the other thing that's going on, and I'm trying to figure out, well, how can we do that? And how can I best get your thoughts, your input on some of these things? Because I don't, I think we're developing a consensus about streamlining I, I, that far. And uh, I'll be reading S Sue's minutes to sort of as you will, uh, to figure out, okay, what can we distill from this as, as to what would be next steps? And then, you know, and then how do we make that work? Um, and I, I'm also looking at the, our agenda too, that I wanna 
the, 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 the homework of our agenda or the practical work of our agenda, which is uh, to approve the minutes um, and um, to um, and, and, and to hear Mary Beth's report. So in the time we've got 20 minutes left, I'd like to, uh, what do you think we should, what do you, what do you want to tackle next? Tim. Yeah, I would propose then we uh, move on to the other agenda items. I agree with that. Uh, and uh, maybe for the next committee, uh, the next meeting, we can address the question and, and fine tune a bit more what committees we really think are necessary. And having heard Chad, I think having a strategic planning committee uh, is a good idea. That's totally different than the other committees. And then um, move ahead and our focus of our discussion in January might be more specifically, okay, do we, what are those four functional areas that would constitute the subcommittee or the, the committees of this, uh, of this board? So that's what I would propose we start thinking about it more. Okay, and, that sounds yeah. good. And then I'm gonna, I appreciate that. I think that's a great suggestion. And um, I guess what I'm, I'm asking, I'm gonna repeat my um, request for help from each of you. I, want, I need you to think about this in terms of committee chart. Uh, like, what is it that we want to do? Uh, and then, you know, where do we, how, how can we fit it into any of these uh, committee structures and how, and how, can, how would it work? Um, that the practical matter of how those things will work so that people, you know, are clear about what a committee, what they're working on and what they're signing up for. And so, um, and Rosemary. We all have short memories. Could you put that into writing in an email to each of us as to what you would like? Yes, absolutely. I will. Yes. And yeah. And I, I really, I want, I want you all to call me all the time. <laughs> you know, we I, I, like in terms of feedback and say, hey, I'd like to take on, I'm really called to, uh, I'd like to help you, Pat, on figuring out uh, the committee on services and what the, you know, I, and I, or I really want to work on the beloved community, like, um, uh, and, and helping, you know, like, let's, uh, let's help. I, I'm signing up for that. I want to help figure that out because we've got some great experience and great brain power in this group and and real commitment to our fellow seniors. And so let's mobilize that effect effectively. Uh, so next, uh, okay, so next um, let's, uh, do I hear a motion? Uh, uh, let's look at the secretary's report, approval of minutes. Would uh, I would need to hear a motion of uh, approval of minutes of um, the, of Sue's minutes from the past uh, month? So I assume everybody has read over the minutes and look for the accuracy, and I make a move that uh, we accept the minutes as written. Is there a okay, and, and uh, is that, and that was seconded by Jacqueline? Mila. Is that right? Okay, good, okay. All right, all those in favor, signify by holding your hands up uh, or saying aye. Aye. Okay, all right, I think that's unanimous. Um, all right. And then, um, all right, and then Mary Beth. Mm -hmm. Hi. <laughs> so I've been trying to locate the actual bylaws as you've been speaking. So that's how you've seen me getting up and down. I've consulted several sources because as I recall looking at them, I just wanted to add this to your conversation that I believe you have the authority to propose uh, without, um, you, that you can appoint ad hoc committees as deemed necessary. So that if you wanted to create some new committees, you don't necessarily have to go through the cumbersome process of amending bylaws. So certainly you may want to 
amend your bylaws um, just for neatness sake and, and revising and whatnot. But yeah. in, in case that is getting you bogged down in the process of just simply moving forward, um, in your bylaws, section two special committees, the chair may appoint such ad hoc committees as deemed necessary by the council. So I just mm -hmm. wanted you to be aware of that. And I finally located it after yeah. three texts of files uh, that I keep them located in. So um, yeah. just further information. And I think that what I hear in listening to this discussion is that, um, you know, I guess a couple of things is that are your are your structures supporting your goals and the work that you want to do? And I think that that's essentially the inquiry you're engaged in. And yep. Good luck with that. And let me know how I can support you or, uh, you know, in any way around facilitating any changes or information you may need. And if you need to get that exact um, quote or whatever from the bylaw, I can scan and email it to Pat. Mm -hmm. And you can look at that section just mm -hmm. so you feel affirmed. But I believe you all have copies of the bylaws in your member notebooks. And if not, I can always help you locate them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you so much for your, um, for your diligent and perseverant attitudes of looking at these issues. I think that both the council and, and certainly I and my staff are engaged in a in, in two uh, phases of transition. So certainly there is a, a process of taking over as a new uh, director and looking at what new ways could we build on the success that we've had so far. So I think that there's that transition that we're all going through. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, there's also the transition of COVID, which I think really complicates any decisions um, any resources. So I think that they're, they're almost two different questions. And, and it's hard for me often, and that's why I, I, I consulted with Pat and, and you all, because if I was to do um, a survey right now of needs, it would be um, a snapshot in time of what it is to be a senior in COVID, which is relevant and important. But when you then bring up things like long range planning, some of the issues I think would be skewed by COVID. And some of the needs identified would be skewed by COVID. So, so we were recently, Pat and I had the opportunity to speak at the Amherst Women's Club and, and there was a conversation around the number one priority for us should be um, technology and connection, which that is true to this moment in time. I was, I, when I had my response to that question when I was asked was transportation. Because when I look at my long range efforts and what we do when it's not COVID, if I, we don't have transportation, nothing else really matters. I could put on all of the programs anywhere in town that we like, but people can't access them. And, and transportation, I think, plays such a critical role for seniors who, who suffer uh, the burden of losing their license and access to transportation in disproportionate mm -hmm. measure. Mm -hmm. So, so I, and I just share that with you because I think that that's also part of the parsing of our work is figuring out the responses and the need that we're hearing about now do they or will they hold true? So things like beloved community and how we, we approach that, that is, that is a truism regardless of COVID or not. Some other issues that we might be diving into, they might be skewed by this particular moment in time where we're all having to do uh, having to navigate in a different way. So, so I just want to share that with you because I, I'm often toggling between both of those responses with where do we, where do we, um, where does staff spend their time and what, how much long range planning can I engage in right now? And how much is just meeting immediate need because there is a crisis going on. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, that's not really in my report, but I think it's important that I, I just wanted to share that that's my response mm -hmm. uh, and, and if it's relevant to you or not. And now on to exciting um, news for you. So I'm really thrilled to let you know that the Amherst Senior Center was nominated um, for a COVID Hero Award by the Amherst Area Chamber for their A plus awards. So yeah. The, yeah, so the awards are gonna be this evening and there is a special category of A plus um, COVID Hero 
And uh, there's live voting during the event and we stand with a very esteemed crowd of other individuals in the Amherst area who have supported people. So uh, my fellow nominees are the Amherst Survival Center, Rebecca Demling, Wheelhouse Catering, Bistro 63, um, I, I, you know, and the Amherst Senior Center. So um, I don't know, certainly it, it, the, um, the thrill for all of us here is that um, somebody, and I don't even know who, nominated us and saw us as doing some great work in the community. And I just wanted to share that celebration with you all. So um, I think I, I'm deeply appreciative to my staff and how they've managed and met people's concerns during this. Um, and then I just wanted, in case anyone hadn't read the Gazette yesterday, we had a really uh, amazing Veterans Day event yesterday. Um, it was building last year, as you recall, we did the first ever veterans event in the town of Amherst. We had a breakfast, which was just phenomenal. Uh, we put it out there. We really had no idea. We thought maybe six people would come and we ended up setting up four more tables because people were coming, you know, just from all walks of life. And there was a tremendous response. And I think it had to do with the timing. Um, a lot of veterans had been Vietnam veterans and they said that they had not been ready before that point in time, even to acknowledge and, and represent that they had been to Vietnam. So it was deeply moving. Uh, we weren't able to do that. So the only thing I could design in the interim was to do a visit to each of the veterans that I could identify. So it was an interesting task. Uh, the fact that we didn't have a central repository of veterans in the town of Amherst, I mm -hmm. thought was, was interesting in and of itself. Mm -hmm. I worked with a lot of partners. So the veterans office, Steve Connor, um, I contacted Applewood because I knew there had to be veterans there. Um, our own database, of course, and with our work through various um, programs, we do identify <laughs> veterans. So we had a, a group um, and then some other partners where you also worked with Craig's Doors because there are a number of veterans who are in the shelter system. So mm -hmm. we, uh, I put out a call to the town and there were about 12 town staff, including our town manager, which I was really thrilled to have him along. And, um, you know, our treasurer, our finance director, people brought along their children, their dogs. Karen Rainin from our senior health services nurse came with her husband and her therapy dog. And we visited over 65 seniors in the community and just wished them well. Uh, and we, we made up a gift bag. So uh, Jennifer Reynolds uh, led that effort and she was fantastic. We got mm -hmm. donations from the town, from Angela and the community participation officers gave us sort of swag bags and we filled them with some great items, both from the veterans office. Uh, the senior center donated about $120 worth of items. We bought candy and some other provisions that they might find enjoyable card miners and things like that. So it really was a tremendous uh, effort for outreach. And each person I sent out, I sent them out with a notepad um, to also use that as an opportunity to check in with people, find out what they needed. And, and I have to tell you, the, the information we gleaned from that was extremely helpful. We found a number of individuals who were in, uh, frankly, in some great need of some support and assistance, particularly some older and um, more vulnerable seniors um, who really needed the support. It also was great because it generated a host of phone calls when people read the article in the Gazette. They called me and left messages and said, hey, my husband is a veteran and we would love to have a visit from the town. So mm -hmm. in the afternoon, we were doing a second round of, wow. of uh, meeting with people. So um, I just wanted you to be aware that that was a, a great opportunity for us to be known. And really, again, how important it is during COVID to be present outside of the bank center as Pat reflected um, because we are closed and it's the best way that I can think of that I can grasp, find out what needs are. Um, I'm sorry, I, I, I opened your meeting, but I had to just turn my attention for about 10 minutes to another Zoom meeting. So I've had dueling computers because for the holidays, I'm really thrilled to announce this, that group that I work with, all the Western Mass uh, regional directors of senior centers, we've been speaking about holidays and moving into them and 
and what are we all doing? And, and we've all kind of been stymied because the things that one would normally do, you can't have groups together. Um, and my neighbor is Rich Tatamar from Channel 22. So we came up with the idea, we approached them and, and the mass appeal program on Channel 22 at 11 o'clock, they do some community programming with two local broadcasters. They are going to do a senior center sort of holiday seasonal show for us. So we've got that scheduled. It's going to be uh, hot off the presses December 8th at 11 a.m. And um, they're, they're just, they're, it's going to be marvelous. We have the opportunity, five different senior centers are going to send uh, performers or recorded performances from their community to uh, the program. So we've already selected what those five are. We're trying to come across a broad spectrum. There are all kinds of issues with copyright and what kinds of songs can be sung. We wanted to make sure also that it was, uh, they were songs that reflected a diverse a community and also not always just holiday themed. So there's some, there's one that's dedicated to veterans and there are a couple that will be original songs from groups that are within some communities. So I think there's a community from, there's a singing group from Ware, um, from Springfield, from I believe Southwick and, and a few other communities. So it's gonna be fabulous. And then in between the songs, we are having um, presenters about information that would be helpful to older adults of navigating the holidays. They are reaching out to our Dr. Bruna Martins Klein, who we work with here at um, the Amherst Senior Center as a proposed guest speaker to talk about isolation and coping and things of like that. So hopefully we'll have some representation through her, but um, it's the best way. And I think it's gonna, you know, television is a great way to reach a broad audience um, and it tends to be quite accessible. And I wanted you to know for Thanksgiving, and uh, again, you know, we, we uh, are dealing with COVID. So what we will be doing is um, uh, I, my staff and, and town staff will be visiting, we've identified 172 homes. We're gonna be going out to Thanksgiving morning and visiting them and just dropping a small token and just checking in on people, knocking on the doors. How are you doing? Wishing you a happy Thanksgiving because I am very concerned with the uh, advisory that older adults should not join a community or family functions. I think we're going to have a far greater number of individuals who will be home alone. And even if it's just that, you know, five or 10 minutes that we're at the door, I wanted people to know that we were out there, we were available. And then we're going to be doing a, um, a Zoom sing-along with Sarah Joy of Song at 11 o'clock. She's going to be doing a free concert and we're going to be publicizing that so people can join in on Zoom. Um, you know, she does a monthly uh, concert for us here through Zoom. And I have to tell you, it's absolutely phenomenal. Everybody always feels better. I go to it um, just because it's just fantastic. So she's going to do some singing that's uplifting uh, and hopefully get people through the day, which might be quite lonely for individuals. And um, the last or two things, uh, tax work off. I have some fabulous, fabulous news. We have made our participants very happy. Um, the statute allows, the enabling legislation allows for a proxy donation of ours. And luckily we were open from January to March. So we have a, a fund of proxy donations that from which we can draw from that we will be able to donate volunteer hours, which would have been worked by our tax work off volunteers, but they have been prevented from doing any work in the past and they will be getting their full tax abatement through the proxy donation. So I was able to inform all the participants about a week or so ago and people have been really grateful. And it was uh, in part, first of all, it, it is, it's allowed by statute. Town manager absolutely supported that um, because those individuals, I, you know, I keep the statistics on the number of hours they have worked historically going back several years. These are individuals who work the maximum, you know, hours typically 117 uh, point 25 this year. And because COVID prevented them from doing so really was a situation of a detrimental reliance. It is not a loss of, of sort of like income in, in that way in that it is uh, it comes from a fund that was already designated and planned for in full. So it's not an additional expense. Um, it's a one in which uh, had been budgeted and planned for. So we will again offer the tax work off program in January, but this coming year we will not be 
in all likelihood, we will not have that fund of proxy hours. Um, so people coming in will just have to know that whatever they're able to work virtually will probably be the limit that they will be able to access. I've reached out to UMass several times. I know Yvette we, we mentioned earlier in the meeting about students. What I have found and I, and I would want you to understand is that the UMass uh, and also other college students, that that has not been a source of connection at all during this this COVID. And I think that part of that is the messaging. We've said, you know, stay away from seniors, stay away from downtown. Um, and so when I've gone then and said, could, could you rake leaves? Um, not so much. <laughs> there isn't, a, you know, and I think uh, also what we know from research is that the younger people are actually having a harder time with COVID and, and experiencing greater numbers of anxiety and depression with it because they have less track record with challenge. So I know that they all of the students are challenged uh, in that way as well. And I want to just recognize that. But so that that resource for us has really uh, dried up. Um, and I've done a number of emails to deans, to you know those who are in charge of fraternity and service organizations. And I think that everyone is um, just managing to get through. So I, I just wanted you to be aware of that shift because I think that that resource is, is offline for us, um, essentially, um, in, a, in at least in a meaningful way. And then lastly, with regard to fundraising, so far, I have $2,300 for my Move and Groove, and I'll be closing that out in another week and uh, getting some more iPads online. And the friends, I have been uh, working with them because this is the time at which the next uh, newsletter will include their flyer insert where we, there will be a request for donations. The next newsletter is December, January. So I've prepared that for them to get the approval. And then also reminding people that the Florence, uh, Florence Bank uh, started their community, um, like it's like a customer uh, uh, survey, if you will, where you go online. So, so I, I bank there and you get a, an email that says, what organization would you like them to, to donate to? Would you like Florence Bank? We have traditionally received funds because we've earned enough votes. Last year, we didn't earn enough votes because the friends were unable to, to publicize the information. But uh, Dick Yorka went to the um, to the party anyways, and they did one raffle and, and luckily they pulled the Friends of the Ever Senior Center. So we did get a donation. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, uh, it's a bit challenging to try to get um, that, that piece up and motivated because we used to print out ballots and have them here and people would would have them and they could have the information. As far as I know, you know, I just did, it was an online link I got as an email from Florence Bank. So if you know anybody at Florence Bank or if you have an account with Florence Bank, please enter the Friends of the Amherst Senior Center as your preferred nonprofit to receive a donation. That would be, be wonderful. We're gonna include it in the newsletter, but I don't know if they have any ballots uh, distributed in the community or not this year. I don't know what that status is. And uh, Amazon Smile, if you're shopping on Amazon, use Amazon Smile, which is a, a version of Amazon um, that allows us to get a small percentage, but every little bit helps. So, and I think that's it. If you have any questions for me. Yeah. Um, and and I would Mary? notice that, that Jacqueline's hand is up too. So oh, okay, thank you. Uh, I just want to make sure she knows. Yeah. Okay, and Jacqueline. Jacqueline, go ahead. It was uh, earlier, and I will put it on hold for the next time. It was the other conversation that we were having. And, okay. And, uh, yeah, it can, it can wait. It can wait. Okay. And, and Rosemary? It, it eventually yeah, came out. Yeah, my question had to do with the friends. Do you know if the envelope that goes out with the town counting of residents, or they call it the town census, is going along this year because there was always a small envelope for donations to the friends yeah, going I have, out with the town census. I do not know that. I know okay. that I know that Jennifer and I reached out because we realized the flyer insert. So we took uh, 
responsibility yeah. for that, for lack of a better word. I do not know about the that census piece or whether oh. anyone has done any work around that. I haven't been involved in that process, okay. so I don't, I can't respond knowingly to that. Okay, I'll check with Barbara and Jennifer may know also because it was it w would require a donation of I, we have to purchase the friends has to purchase the animals. yeah 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 I know that someone is going to have to reach out to the town clerk to make that request yeah. okay it would be my guess because and since we have a new town clerk my concern is that they wouldn't know that right that 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 process and whatnot would not be yeah okay would not be known so um okay um so um announcements um i do, if you haven't figured that out by now uh the town manager and the town council have supported the uh recommendations uh for our newest members to be Ma uh, mila montemayor and uh chad fuller and they'll be once they're sworn in uh, we will have a full component and that's exciting um, I also want to say uh, and acknowledge and recognize the, um, the enormous work um, that um, Jack Wallensack has done. Uh, Ch uh, Chad will be fulfilling the remainder of uh, the term, uh, uh, of Jack's term. And, and I will, we wanna thank Chad for that uh, willingness to, to do that and step forward for that. Uh, Tim, go ahead. In, in that vein and with the uh, spirit of welcome, Myla and uh, Chad, uh, what do you think, um, here's my suggestion, that we each send a short paragraph to you, Pat, that maybe mm -hmm. then can be aggregated to for the whole committee of each of the nine of us about our background. Uh, I love to, it. Just so we get to know each other. Uh, okay. It's really hard with Zoom to, to know who's who. Yes. Just, and I was going to suggest we have a short discussion at the meeting, but if we take five minutes time time, that's almost an hour. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm that's for sure. I'm and actually, suggesting maybe a short paragraph that then we each get a copy of that. And then while I have like zero understanding of who you are, blah, 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 you and me. Uh, and that's one suggestion, if that's possible. What do you think? That sounds great. Um, yeah. And yeah. Um, that, that's wonderful. And I, I, I don't, I see a lot of positive head nodding for that. And so well, thank you. I'm gonna assume that's gonna work out. Uh, do you wanna, I'll tell you, Tim, do you wanna sort of, co uh, why don't we send that stuff to you though? That would be, are you willing to receive that? Sure. That, that would help me a lot. Okay. okay. And then I'll just then, if you will quote public. Yes. Totally. And then we can have that available, sure. Um, and you yeah. on your master list. For those of you who don't have it yet, like Myla and Chad, my email is, if you have a pencil, T-A-N-E-A-L-E, -E 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 -E, just like you see in my name on the screen there, T-A-N-E-A-L at Comcast.net. And we'll be updating our membership list uh, in imminently so that and okay. all members will get that oh, perfect okay yeah so well, yeah that, that'll that. be helpful to I'll everyone just aggregate it all together and we'll go from there perfect okay. thank you um we will okay. not have um a december meeting uh of the council our next meeting will be thursday january 14th 2021 mm -hmm. at nine o'clock uh, so that'll give us plenty of time to think and noodle around uh com our committee structure uh yeah. in between time so um, uh, I just, uh, and I just wanted to say, and the reason for that, the canceling of the meeting is that my husband's surgery will, is, is imminent. Uh, he's having joint replacement surgery, the first of two. And uh, so uh, my duties at a, as a caregiver for him will be significant, uh, have already um, are significant at the present time. So um, uh, that's gonna, uh, that's that's the, essentially the reason. Um, I'm I'm like to ask for a, um, a motion for adjournment. Anyone? Any? So moved. All right. All right. 
and second and um, show show by hand or voice um, if you're in favor. All right. Thanks everyone um, so much. Thank you. You're thank all you. good. Okay. Terrific. Bye-bye. Goodbye.